One of the things that we want to try to do is we want to create what's called a quantum dot sensitized solar cell, uh, which is a newer class of solar cell. And the idea is that you have one particle and that particle is going to act as a charge carrier. So when I create an electron, it will bounce around on a large particle to be collected and then produce your electricity. And then you have a smaller particle that will act as sort of the uh, light harvesting particle. And that particle's job is take the light, create the electron. And those are the quantum dots. And so if I could create a nanoparticle haloing system where I have a large particle that's made of the charge carrying type materials like titanium dioxide, and I have a small nanoparticle that we can use as the quantum dot that is made of these sort of charge generating materials, things like cadmium selenide, lead sulfide, uh, and materials like that. And I could create one nice colloidal crystal structure with those two particles inside of it. I've effectively had a quantum dot sensitized solar cell assemble itself. And then all I need to do is take that crystal structure, put it on an electrode, and now you have a fully functional solar cell. There are a lot of applications for colloidal crystals made from nanoparticle haloing suspensions, and these are mainly idealized photonic crystals. You can take advantage of that in different optical systems. One example is in the telecommunications industry. Right now, if you want to take a signal from one fiber optic line and transition it to another fiber optic line, you have to first take that optical signal, turn it into an electrical signal, then run it through electrical switching gear, and then turn it back into an optical signal to send it on its way. If you could create a crystal structure that would just bend light directly, you could just keep the light as is, run it through a colloidal crystal, have that colloidal crystal bend the light onto a new fiber optic line, and now you've switched lines and you didn't have to go through the effort of transforming it back into an electrical signal. And that's a huge energy savings in the telecommunications industry. And this is where nanoparticle haloing is really interesting for those applications because in order to bed light in a normal crystal structure, you would have to build in defects so that the light could move effectively around the defects. And that's really hard to do. But with the nanoparticles, the nonlinear optical effects are actually uh, something that is inherent to their properties as a nanomaterial. So by playing with particle volume versus surface area, as well as particle size and material, all of those will allow us to have very different and very controllable levers to be able to bend light because each one of those control points will interact with light in a slightly different way and that's where you can actually really get into the idea of bending light.